Are you a 90s kid? Because if you're not, you better get out right now. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your everyday nerd, the show where we prefer dry erase markers over chalk because chalk just makes way too much of a mess. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today is Monday Nostalgia. Happy Monday. On Monday, I take a look at media from my childhood. These are shows, movies, games, anything and everything that I watched, read, or played when life was just much simpler and I didn't have to pay bills because bills suck. I, I, I noticed week one when editing, I do this a lot. <sighs> life sucks, guys. I'm frustrated. I'm really frustrated. <laughs> I recently got the streaming service Verve, which is super dope. By the way, guys, if you're watching, can you sponsor me? Because I could... I could use some money. Hit me up. Let me know. Email me. I could I could use I could use the money. I really like the service and I was looking on there and they started putting old Nickelodeon shows on there, which is really cool. There's a lot of them that I watched as a kid, which I'll be doing on Mondays, but there's also some of them that I didn't watch when I was a kid. So I'm looking forward to watching those either on Thursday for Throwback Thursday or one of the other days of the week. But I decided to start with a show that I forgot existed. See, entertainment is such a weird thing. We consume so much of it as a kid that when we get older, we forget about a lot of it. So when we see it one day, you know, scrolling down a website, boom, a bunch of nostalgia just hits you and you're like, whoa, I forgot this was a thing. And then you wonder, you know, that age old question hits you. You're like, is this as good as I remember it being? Because it probably isn't, but you know, you're gonna watch it anyways. And you might enjoy it, but you might not. Most of the time, you're left disappointed, but sometimes you do come across a gem. And that's where I'm left wondering about Chalk Zone. So today's episode, we're gonna look and see where Chalk Zone is on that spectrum. Chalk Zone was a Nickelodeon cartoon created by Bill Burnett and Larry Huber. Chalk Zone originally aired as a part of Fred Siebert's Oh Yeah Cartoon Showcase in 1998. In fact, it was in the very first episode of the Oh Yeah Cartoons lineup, which would later spawn not only Chalk Zone, but also shows like The Fairly Odd Parents and My Life as a Teenage Robot, another show that I forgot completely existed. Chalk Zone would then go on to run from March of 2002 to August of 2008 with a total of four seasons and 40 episodes. Since it is a kid's show that doesn't have an overarching plot, every single episode is kind of a mishmash of shorts, it's not one of those shows that I can really binge all the way through. I'm only going to be taking a look at a select few episodes. The concept of the show is fairly simple. Rudy Tabuti, yes, that's his name is a 10 year old who has an affinity with drawing. One day he gets into trouble due to the school bully named Reggie Bullnerd, who is an interesting character because his last name is Nerd, yet he's also a bully. It's, it's a weird concept. The whole show is pretty weird, but we'll get to that eventually. Since Rudy gets in trouble, he goes to detention. Here he has to write cartoons are not funny over and over again because his teacher is a modern day politician that doesn't understand the value of art and children's education. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got I got a little political there for a second. I didn't mean to. Um, anyways, as Rudy goes to change the chalk, he comes across this magic chalk called White Lightning, which opens up a portal into a magical world called Chalk Zone. Essentially, it's the place where everything that's ever been erased goes and lives. Along the way, we meet Snap, Rudy's favorite childhood drawing, and Penny, Rudy's girlfriend. Is, is she his girlfriend? I'm not quite sure. I mean, I want somebody to look at me that way when I'm talking about something I'm passionate about. But that's really the plot of Chalk Zone. They go into Chalk Zone, mayhem and hijinks ensues, they leave Chalk Zone. There's some real life stuff and that's pretty much it. But I did watch a few episodes and I was surprised that I still kinda like the show. I mean, it's not a great show by any means, it's not something that I could binge and watch like right now, but it is something that I think is unique and holds up. What Chalk Zone lacks in overarching plot, it makes up with creative style. This entire show exudes style. 
For starters, you can't deny that the show has actually aged pretty well. Since the majority of the backgrounds and characters are drawn in this chalk aesthetic, it's an art style that could easily be revamped tomorrow and still be able to stand out against all the cartoons that are airing today. And even if some of the chalk drawings look crude, it's completely understandable because it's known that these are erased children's drawings. Most children's drawings are not gonna look good. They're gonna be subpar at best. Except for yours. If you're watching and you're a child, well first off, you shouldn't be watching. Where's your parents at? Your Everyday Nerd is a show for adults. Sometimes we say bad words, but anyways, your drawings are good. Keep, keep drawing, kid. You'll get there one day. It's okay. The other big thing I appreciate about Chalk Zone style is its music. It's this weird mixture of sweeping rock guitars and electronic synthesizers and basses that makes up a unique and interesting soundtrack that I really enjoy. Pair the art and music with the quirky character designs found in Chalk Zone, it makes for a cartoon that's fun to look back onto. It's probably also fun to watch while high. I don't know, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Chalk Zone's voice acting is also weird. It, each of the characters have this distinct voice that I haven't heard in any other cartoon before. Usually when you watch cartoons from any era, you can usually pick out voices and be like, oh, that's the same voice from this cartoon and such so forth. This one, they all have this distinct voice that I don't think I've heard from other cartoons. Snap to the rescue. Do, 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 do. Pow, pow, pow. Is it me, boy? But with all of these positives, I can't say that it's a great show. I mean, it's visually and sonically great, but it does lack substance. I mean, it is a show targeted towards kids, so this isn't completely surprising, but it is important to point out. Each full-length episode will have two to three short stories. None of these episodes that I watched were bad by any means, they were just okay. It's non-offensive content. It's just something that I wouldn't mind my future kids watching, but definitely not one of those cartoons that I could watch all the way through right now. Usually when it comes to cartoons or even shorter form TV shows, there's a few things that's gotta keep me from coming back for more. There's either an overarching plot that occurs that'll keep me going to the next episode, or there's gotta be great comedy. Chalk Zone doesn't really have either of it going for it. Again, it's not bad. There's tons of bad cartoons out there from this era. It's just grossly mediocre when it comes to its comedy. Each episode has a distinct formula that it follows, and after watching four episodes in a row, certain characters' catchphrases can actually get a bit annoying after a while. They're not really funny. This does stem from the unique voice acting that they have, which is both a positive and a negative. There's never really any jokes that land. There's creative ways that Rudy uses the chalk to get in and out of situations, and that's really cool. Maybe some of them that leads to visual comedy and even some that could be said to be on the edge of clever, but I never laughed out loud at anything that these shows presented. It was more of, oh, that's really cool the way that this style is. At the end of each episode, there's always some kind of music video. It rarely has to do with the rest of the episode. I think the creators just wanted to have some kind of musical outlet to express themselves in. These songs are meant to be catchy hooks that allow children to sing along to, but they're nothing special in the musical department. If anything, they're a solid gimmick, but if I was to watch more episodes of the show right now, these are definitely something that I would skip. When it comes to kids shows, you'll oftentimes find that, especially when it comes to nostalgia, there's a lot of garbage that you watched as a kid, with only a few select shows being something that you'd willingly want to sit down and watch as an adult. When it comes to Chalk Zone, it airs on the side of good, but not great. Its style is unique, both visually and musically, but with no substance to its comedy or story, it's just another kid show. That's not necessarily a bad thing, you just have to realize when nostalgia rushes in that sometimes a kid's show is just a kid's show, and that's cool. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. 
Here on YouTube, it can be difficult to take things to the next level. When you've decided that you want to take video creation seriously, that's when it's time to either give up <laughs> because YouTube's really hard or buckle down and get yourself into a mentorship group. Here's where Awesome Creator Academy comes in. Sometimes you need a bit of help, structure, and accountability to be successful as a creator. The Awesome Creator Academy Mentoring Group gives you a place where you can get training, advice, and support when working on your projects, growing your brand, and building your business from people who are working just as hard as you are. I've personally been a part of the Awesome Creator Academy for a year now, and not only has it helped me be better focused and make more realistic goals, but it's put me in a place with other creative professionals that want to succeed just as much as I do. It's a place where I go to share my successes, my failures, and everything in between, and I highly recommend it. And with all that being said, if you check out the link in the description box below, you can become a member of the Awesome Creator Academy today, which will not only help you become a more successful creator, but it also makes sure that I'm able to eat this month, because let me tell you, when you're ready to take YouTube to the next level, you still have to eat, I know. It sucks. That's all we have time for today. If you're a 90s kid and you can relate to this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're not a 90s kid, you can still hit that like button. Everybody, everybody can hit the like button. Go ahead and subscribe. Week two is here of your everyday nerd and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.